Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're testing Stalker 2 on nothing but integrated graphics. You saw how demanding it was yesterday on the minimum system specs. So today I thought we'd try an iGPU starting with UHD 770 graphics found as part of the i9. So we're throwing a lot of CPU power at this, but unfortunately with the UHD 770 graphics, I couldn't get anywhere. In fact, the game just crashed as shown by this crash reporter here. So not off to the best of starts, but we'll move on to the AMD side of things and start with the Ryzen 5560U and Radeon iGPU found inside a uh, B-Link mini PC. That's the system of choice today. You've seen it before. It's also got 16 gigs of DDR4 dual channel memory. So I started off with with 1080p and FSR set to ultra performance but unfortunately as you can see here we're seeing less than 20 frames per second and the game is looking pretty uh, horrible there's there's no two ways about it here the lighting looks awful the textures I mean there's no atmosphere inside this house in fact if you're pretty scared of uh, survival games like this you know you're worried something is going to jump out of you just turn it down to the lowest settings and it's going to turn it into a bit of a cartoon and nothing can possibly be scary when it looks like it was drawn uh, by a 10 year old but uh, you may beg to differ but this certainly would put me at ease exploring some of the darker and dingier places of this game that's for sure all right, so we're testing a 1080p TSR performance now. Performance mode, TSR, another form of upscaling at 25% resolution scale. This one looks to be doing a little better. I'll have the exact figures up on screen at the end of the video. I think even at the lowest settings, Stalker 2 doesn't look too bad. Obviously, with upscaling, it's a bit harsh on the eyeballs, and you wouldn't want to be playing it like this for more than a few minutes at a time, unless you enjoy migraines. Now I had to take some drastic action with the 5560U and Radeon iGPU here. As you can see, we are now at 720p resolution, but not only that, we've also enabled FSR once again, set it to ultra performance. So we're upscaling to 720p from something like 240p and performance is pretty much exactly the same now I thought I'd try and wipe a few of these guys out you probably saw me attempt that yesterday the first thing I did was lob a grenade towards them but it's pretty hard to tell what's going on again takes away from the atmosphere a bit when everything is all uh, a few colors and just there are no shadows about I think that's what it is when you take away shadows from a situation it uh, removes some of the intensity but there we are. 20 FPS now. I wouldn't really call this playable. Even if I was desperate, I'd have a sort of hard time. I remember playing Far Cry 3 back in the day at about 20 FPS on an AMD A4 3300 APU. So I have done it before. Um, probably wouldn't like to play a game like this, however. And my keyboard and mouse started playing. I'm not sure why. I think the PC just, just started giving up at this point. It thought, well, you can't run the game anyway. I may as well switch off. But we'll move on to our more modern test system now, the 8700G APU with Radeon 780M graphics. So here we are with the 8700G and 780M graphics. Once again, I'm recording externally using a secondary GPU. I'm actually using a GTX 960 in the PCIe slot to record called externally to an Elgato capture box. I found this is a pretty decent way of recording footage without losing any performance. FSR balanced yet again, that is what I stuck with in yesterday's video and all of the settings are at their respective lowest or switched off. Now what you may find interesting is that the 780M iGPU solution actually performs pretty closely to the GTX 1060 that we looked at yesterday in pairing with the Ryzen, was it 1600X? I believe my memory should be longer than 24 hours, but that's a concern for another day. Right now, what I'm concerned about are these visuals, and it doesn't look as bad when we have FSR balanced upscaling to 1080p. I have to say this is a good looking game, even with a lack of shadows and lighting effects. Uh, the state of this bungalow, honestly, not just how it looks, but the lighting effects are pretty non-existent in here, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make to get a plus 30 FPS average. I'd actually recommend aiming for plus 30 FPS if you are running hardware like this. I think trying to target 60 and you're gonna be disappointed. I mean, we could implement FSR 
ultra performance again, turn the base resolution down to 900p, but it's going to make things pretty hard to see. And there are still going to be dips and drops below 60 FPS anyway. It's not going to be a consistent experience. I should mention my other specs as well. Aside from the 8 core 16 thread 8700G Ryzen, we have 32 gigabytes of 60 400 megahertz DDR5 in dual channel. Now, with this AM5 APU, anything over 6000 megahertz in terms of memory, and you're starting to see a smaller and smaller gap in performance. I mean, to be fair, the difference between 6000 and 6400 megahertz memory in this case is absolutely tiny, a couple of percentage points at least from what I've experienced. I've also done nothing else with the iGPU. There's no overclocking at all here. Everything is just running on stock settings and I'm using a basic Thermalrite CPU cooler that I bought off Amazon which seems to be doing a relatively decent job. As you can see we're using upwards of 20 gigabytes of system memory and with these settings the game has allocated over 4 gigs of VRAM to uh, this GPU, this iGPU, or is that the other way around? The iGPU has allocated uh, four gigs of VRAM to the game. That sounds more like it. As you can see, as we make our way towards this building once again, our frame rate does dip a little below 30 frames per second, and there are going to be moments like this. Yesterday, this was quite troublesome for our system. It turns out this is where we saw a lot of dips and drops. If you're just walking around exploring, then it's going to be at least 30 FPS on your screen most of the time. I totally forgot the controls at this point. I was trying to switch to this uh, submachine gun. It finally did it after a lot of messing around, as you can see. But if we make our way towards the main building again. I intend to make my way towards that blimp thing, that airship in the sky. That looks pretty interesting at some point. See what's going on over there. But for now, we'll clear this zone of enemies once again. Everything is a lot more visible now, as you can see too. Now at this point, we were seeing 25, 26 FPS yesterday with the minimum specs, the Ryzen 1600X and 1060. And the 7ATM seems to be holding a bit more steady in this intensive situation. As the gunfight starts to heat up here, we're still seeing plus 30 FPS, but as I mentioned yesterday, you may want to implement a 30 FPS cap because it may smooth out the overall experience. If you look at that frame time graph, it's sort of going up and down all over the place, but if we have a 30 FPS cap in place, which we can implement through software such as Tuner, which comes bundled with MSI Afterburner, then we may get a more consistent experience. And although it will be a 30 FPS experience, consistency, I feel, is key. Because this isn't a fast multiplayer online title either, I think 30 FPS is more doable in that regard. You know, if we were running around chasing other players, we need as many frames as we can possibly get. But I think if we're using hardware like this, integrated graphics, uh, let's say you want to play this game, you're happy with 30 FPS, cap it to that uh, for the sake of what will feel like a more smooth experience and enjoy it with FSR balanced enabled. You could use a more aggressive preset as I said but this I feel provides a nice, well the preset says it itself doesn't it, a nice balance between visual fidelity and performance. There's not too much of a visual sacrifice uh, for the performance that we get here in my opinion. The higher frame rate or the more consistent frame rate with the 7ATM actually made this or clearing this warehouse a bit easier as well. Yesterday it was stuttering all over the place and I got wiped out about five times. But if you do want to use an iGPU, it seems at the moment uh, Intel UHD crashes, at least for me, may not be the same for you. Older Ryzen APUs will struggle to hit 30 FPS unless you use some extreme form of anti-aliasing. You might get better luck with a 5600G or 5700G desktop APU, but when it comes to the newest, uh, or one of the newest APUs, the 8700G, then this is certainly your best bet and possibly the only way to hit at least 30 frames per second with Stalker 2. But I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next time.